What's up guys, Mohammed aka Magnolia Mo here. In this video, we are going to take a look at the SVS mobile app for their subwoofers and use the parametric EQ function that's on the app to make certain adjustments before we get to run Odyssey or Direct Live or Direct Live with bass control or Magic Beans and so on and so forth. What I want to do is actually see by using the PEQ app, right? Um, and making certain adjustments, I want to determine whether the true target by Magic Beans by Joe Intel, right? The target curve that Magic Beans provides, or the true target, is the true target truly based off of your speakers and your room's natural response, okay? So let's get on with it. Here, I have my REW, I have the Pioneer Elite set to pure direct mode and here are the rew readings from june 24th when i did the comparison between odyssey pure direct and magic beans what i'm going to focus on is the lfe pure direct reading uh, off of the denon x3800 back on june 24th i'm going to run the pure direct sweep with the pioneer and see if i can get any close to my original pure direct, pure direct reading right and i've already do, done the volume um, adjustments right so let's see pretty damn close given it's a different receiver so this is the magic beans direct live bass control lfe sweep compare that to the pure direct in this particular case from the Pioneer and I also had the Pure Direct from the Denon which is right here, right? So they're very close. So I'm gonna try to get as close as possible to the Magic Beans curve using the parametric EQ on the SVS app. Okay, so here's the SVS app and you have the SB3000 that I've selected. So let me just go over the low pass filter that's inactive Phase is set to zero. Polarity is positive. Parametric EQ is all in disabled right now. Room gain compensation is also disabled. Okay, this is the SB3000. And let me show you SB16 Ultra. You'll see uh, room gain disabled parametric EQ, all of those are disabled. Polarity is positive, phase is zero on the SB16 Ultra as well, and the low pass filter is disabled also. Let's start with the SB16 Ultra. So here's the 72 Hertz frequency, as you can see that you know has quite a bit of, bit of a boost right there, right? What we wanna do is tame that, so I'm gonna cut the 72 Hertz frequency by minus three dB, and then the Q factor, I'm gonna keep it as narrow as possible because I want to only affect this area, right? So that's the 72 Hertz, so let's measure. So with this, the SB16 didn't really do a whole lot, right? As you could see, didn't reduce it by that much. So let's go to SB3000 and pick the 70 hertz frequency and here I'm gonna cut it by minus 12. So let's rerun it. Aha, you see that? That was the SB3000 and the SB16 Ultra kinda both working together to create that 70 hertz but I think primarily it's it's the SB3000 so that we got rid of right there okay now but what it did was it created a a little bit of a null at this 51.16 hertz range everything else is the same right so what we want to do is boost the 50 hertz frequency by 5 dB I think the maximum boost is 6 so we're gonna do 5 with a Q factor of 3.3, .3, right? Again, I want to be as narrow as possible, but not too narrow, because I want to actually affect this entire area here, right? So let's run this one again. 
with the filter for 50 hertz on the SB3000. Aha! So that null seems to be going away, right? So, so far we've adjusted, we've gotten rid of this null right here and this peak, okay? So what else do we need to do, right? So we need to bring up this uh, the from about 18 hertz to 29 hertz we want to bring up the response in that range right I'm not going to worry about this because if you guys have seen all my other videos <laughs> this is my room uh, it's a null that's caused by my room okay and possibly the location of the couches and the subs and there's nothing I can do about that for now all right so let's focus on so we did the the 70 hertz the 50 hertz and now let's go to this 40 hertz area and we want to actually instead of trying to bring up the base or the response here I'm gonna try to tame this so that maybe it will bring up the null that's caused in this area right so at 40 hertz I want to cut the frequency by minus 3 dB and then the Q factor of 8 so let's measure Okay, so as you can see, so this was the one, uh, this is without the the filter for 40 hertz. This is with the filter for 40 hertz. It, it does bring it down a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, doesn't really affect anything else, right? It's just this, this range right here, it's bringing it down. So that's all I, I did with the SB3000, okay? So the 40 hertz frequency, the 70 hertz, and the 50 hertz. Let's just switch over to the SB16 because we only adjusted the 70 hertz over there. See how we can affect the overall frequency response here, right? So let's switch over to the 25 hertz range, which is right about here. And, and this is just me, you know, kind of figuring out, you know, which sub is creating the nulls or where, you know, which is creating the peaks. So for 25 hertz, I want to boost that by 5 dB and the Q factor of 2 meaning I, I want as wide of a range as I can right so that this entire area gets affected so that is 25 Hertz let's go aha see so the lack of response was from the SB16 Ultra and now that it has gone up right so we've eliminated this null right here that we had considerably okay so 25 hertz is all set 70 hertz is all set the last one is the 35 hertz range which is here right in this area i want to actually cut that frequency right because if you look at this this is not a natural sweep what i'm looking for is stronger output in the low frequencies and then kind of you know uh, tapering it down uh, as we move uh, up you know as far as the frequency responses are concerned so here I'm gonna target the 35 Hertz cut that frequency by minus 4.6 Q factor of 5 okay let's measure Wow see now it's relatively straight with very few dips across the board that can be our starting point right and then we can run Dirac we can run Odyssey and get an even better response but PEQ looks pretty darn good to me all right I'm sure I could have done more but this is a good starting point right so now the next step is to compare the magic beans direct live base control to what we just came up with from a PEQ perspective this is the pure direct PEQ from the Pioneer versus the LFE Magic Beans Direct Live base control on the Denon X3800. All right, now let's bring in Odyssey also. So you got the Odyssey Magic Beans Direct Live base control and then you have my PEQ on the Pioneer. I received quite a few comments on the video that I did 
on True Target by Magic Beans. Uh, there were some comments basically saying that, oh, so Magic Beans is just boosting the base. No, and I've said this, and our buddy Joe Intel has also said the same thing, which is it's not just boosting, it is actually going with the natural curve of the room. And so at the end of the day, right, when you take a look at this, Magic Beans, or the true target by Magic Beans, is not actually boosting, right, the target curve. Target curve is based off of your room's natural gain and your natural responses right the bottom line here is magic beans is actually giving you a target curve that is more suited for your room um, versus odyssey which is just flattening the curve right essentially uh, and that's why the bass sounds anemic as you can see the boost by magic beans or true target is in this 30 hertz range okay uh, it's boosting 30 hertz frequency by about, so say about 60 beats, right, overall. Gradual increase, and that's what you would want. You would want to have more output uh, in your low frequencies, and then and then it gradually tapers off, right? I Obviously, I can try to do that with the, the PEQ app, but that's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to find out what's the natural response of my subwoofers uh, using the Pioneer 505, LX505, uh, and after applying the PEQ. It is very close to what Magic Beans has, except for this, you know, this energy right here between 23 and, and about 47 hertz, and that's basically the curve. I hope you guys found this video useful. As usual, please leave me your comments, your feedback, and, uh, you know, we can have a civilized discussion about my findings and what I did here in this video. And if there's something else you want to see, you know, let me know. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.